Good day, folks. It's no mercy. You understand? VixenVarsity.com. You know, um, we're here for our first interview, and I want to welcome a very special guest who goes by the name Milan Melissa. You understand? Um, introduce them to yourself. Let them know a little bit about you, you know, what you're doing, where you're from. All right, cool. Uh, my name is Milan Melissa, and uh, I'm an actor. And, uh, I'm co-starring in a movie called Freezer with Dylan McDermott. It's called Freezer, and it came out on Tuesday, the 21st. Okay. And, uh, no and Mercy um, got a copy of that and gave me a call, and I'm here to do an interview. So, it's cool. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now, um, what inspired you to become an actor? Let's start off with that. Like, what inspired you to get into acting? I, I've always wanted to be an actor since I was a kid. Since I saw like Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. Okay, oh, that would be great an actor. Too. Yeah, man, it was an amazing movie. And uh, you know, I finished high school. I did a play in high school. I got accepted into theater school. And so I did that. I got a bachelor's in fine arts. And then I started doing a couple more plays, worked with some professional people. I did an MFA. And then I got some TV gigs, and I got a movie gig, and I just got this big so, gig. So, you know, kept going step by step. Okay, now, um, is this your first movie gig? This is my second film gig, but this is my first uh, co-star role. Okay, what so, were the other roles like? Were you like supporting or? Yeah, I, I would have like uh, a small gig or whatever uh, on this movie called The Boy Who Smells Like Fish. It stars Carrie Ann Moss, Douglas Smith, and a couple other people. But that was a very small role. And uh, I would, I played a, a Serbian immigrant who, who had like a, a problem with smelling bad. I, it was a comedic role, that one. This one's not so much. This one's more like psychopathic Russian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one seems a little more dark and devious. Like, that's what attracted me to the movie. Because um, I was going through Google and I was searching through like recent movies that came out that were like maybe action oriented, mm -hmm. um, thriller. And for some reason, this one just happened to grab me like a guy stuck in the freezer. Yeah, cool. It just makes me curious. Like, why is a guy stuck in the freezer for something that he didn't do? You understand? So that's what made me go and check it out. Right and on. your character was dark and shady, but at the same time amusing. So you understand? Cool. Um, how were you able to fit into the character? Like, do y'all have any like similarities or anything like that? Well, the, the character's Russian. When I auditioned, see, I'm not, I'm, I'm not Russian at all. When I auditioned, I auditioned in Serbia. My parents are Serbian. But it's a funny story. I think that they thought it was Russian, so I got cast. And the day I come on set, I, I realized all the co-stars are Russian. They all speak Russian. So I started having a panic attack, and I learned everything. Like, phonetically. I wrote it out. I memorized it. But I can relate to the character, you know. I mean, he's just following orders, you know. He's got to be a little crazy because otherwise he couldn't do that type of job. Um, and I wanted to make him interesting in the fact that, you know, he's sort of a soldier, but when he loses it, he loses it. You know, that's his ambition. You know, his name's Stefan. He's, uh, he's a Russian mafioso that has to get the $8 million back from Dylan McDermott. That's why he's trapped in his freezer. And so we got to use torture and things like that to get it out of him. So obviously this guy's got a little couple screws loose, but I wanted to keep it based in reality as well. Okay. Now, um, this movie was pretty gory. You understand? Um, not too much in the vein of like a sore flick, but something where it's just a lot of blood splatter. Like, is yeah. this something that you're used to watching? Like, do you like horror movies and movies that are filled with, you know, gore and things like that? Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I do. I like those types of movies for sure. This is the first time I've ever done something like that. Except for one, I did an episode of like Nikita or something where, where I shot up a couple people or something like that. But, <laughs> 
But this is like the first time I ever like took an axe to somebody's head. Oh yeah, yeah, that yeah. was pretty intense scene. Like, how do you prepare yourself for scenes like that? You know what? I asked I asked the director, Mikhail, I asked him, can I have like five minutes? And he said you have 30 seconds. <laughs> so I'm so I'm in the back before I have to enter the freezer, I gotta be crazy. And I'm just sort of like getting myself into this sort of uh, psychosis. Okay, now what kind of thoughts do you have to think of to put yourself in that mood? Like? It was you know, everybody's got their own sort of way of doing it, but I would use personal things, you know, like personal things to sort of create emotion for me. Or, uh, like personal things you go with through? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, things from like my past and stuff, sort of like a method yeah. type, type uh, strategy. Okay, that's pretty understandable. Yeah. Um, do you have any plans on continuing to do roles like this? Like, do you have any movies coming up that you're, you know, currently working on or you've been booked for that, you know, you might be working on soon? Yeah, I, I, I actually, I booked a role and I, I tore my Achilles doing a play. I was I was playing Mercutio in Romeo and Juliet in Toronto. And uh, I booked a role in a Henry Rollins movie and I tore my Achilles and I had to be recast. But either way, that happened. I'm doing uh, two Neil LeBute plays in Toronto coming up in March and April. And then I'm probably going to take a show to Serbia. I just got called like two days ago by a friend of mine who's a producer and a director. And he wants me to do a show in some in a theater in Serbia. And uh, yeah, I think a couple of roles are going to be coming my way, hopefully. Okay. Now, um, as far as Serbia and Toronto, as far as like the whole film procedures, do you see any differences between the two? Like, you know, when you're on set in one place and when you're on set in another? Like, yeah. do you see differences by the way things operate? Well, definitely. I mean, I'm, I'm based out of Toronto now, and, and lots of these movies from the States come up. And they cast half the film in Toronto. Like all usually like co-star roles at the at the top, right? Because most of the stars come from Hollywood. So Canada sort of fills in those roles and, and you know, we make those types of movies. As far as Serbia goes or Europe, that's a whole different story. Like that's you know, a movie in a different language and completely different. But Canadian films are American films. Pretty much. Okay. Now, um, as far as trying to learn the language, because in the movie Freeza, you actually had to learn the Russian language a little bit. So how easy was it? Like, was it easy to pick up on, or did you kind of have to, like, Google your way through everything? I had, I had, like, I had a panic attack, man. I had a, I was in my hotel room thinking, I'm going to be fired. <laughs> I'm going to be fired. I'm looking at the script, I'm like, my God. Because my co-star, Yulia, was a chess master at the age of 12. She's like this Russian genius. And she's a great actress as well. I know that they tend to play a lot of chess over there. Like a lot of the best chess players do come from Russia. Yeah, yeah. Russians, Russians are, are wild people, man. They love chess. They're super emotional. You know, they love the arts. They love <laughs> dance, ballet, all this stuff. But I mean, I remember her telling me, like, she's like, "Can you do this?" I'm like, "Yeah, I can do this. No problem." I go, I go to the hotel room. I'm like, "Okay, okay." Write this out phonetically, do this. But you know what, man? Like, when you're under pressure, you don't have time to second guess yourself, which I guess I think helped me a little bit. You know, I mean, the, you know, the movie will speak for itself, but when I was in there, I was kind of on my toes. You know, I, I was like paying attention to her because I'm like trying to listen to her. I don't really understand what she's saying. You know, but you have to kind of look and be like, you know. So, um, let me ask you, as far as the, as far as the amount of takes you had to do during different scenes, like, what scene did you have to do over the most? Oh man, it was, it was, uh, the first scene with Yulia when I'm smoking the cigar in the background. Not the first scene, but the second scene when Yulia comes in, the girl. Uh, I must have smoked 14 cigars. Oh wow. I mean like full on cigars. And by the end of it, like I felt like I was turning green or something like that. And my hands had like pins and needles all throughout my body. And I I, I was like, uh, can we take a break? But you know, there was a lot to shoot, man. And I think it helped the scene though. Okay. <laughs> Approximately how long 
Millie, how long did the um, movie all together take to film? We shot for about three weeks. Most of it was shot in Edmonton, and then we shot in Long Beach. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It was it was a quick shoot. It was a quick shoot. So we had a lot of pages to do every day. But you know, when you when you have less time, you know, you you speed up the process too. It becomes more condensed and more specific when you come into work. So they get all the shots ready. Okay. Now, um, the characters in movies that you have to have the most. The most contact with our set. How are y'all relationships off set? Like as far as like you and um, McDermott, you know, how how was y'all chemistry off Mc, set? Yeah, Dylan. Dylan's the nicest guy I've ever met, and he's he's a genuine dude. Yeah, he's from Hollywood. Yeah, he's a Golden Globe winner and all this stuff. And he's a great actor, but he's also actually a really down to earth guy. And he helped me a lot on the set. You know, um, my first sort of big film. And he like sort of coached me through. We we smoked a lot of cigars. <laughs> we talked about the character. Okay. Um, Yulia was great to work with too. You know, she's like a perfectionist, so she kept me on my toes. And uh, Andre was awesome. Peter Fascinelli. You, I I only worked with him one day, but he's a great guy too. I mean, we we were lucky, man. Like the whole cast was incredible. But D Dylan's definitely my favorite actor. <laughs> Now, as far as your role in the movie, what's the type of feedback you've been getting from the people like who's watched the movie already? What have they been saying about your character? Like, have they enjoyed it? Have not enjoyed it? Or you know? Well, I, I, I hope I hope they've enjoyed it. Uh, I was lucky. I got mentioned in, in uh, you know some reviews. I got some mentions like the Boston Herald and uh, DVD Verdict and stuff like that. Not that I'm like looking for for reviews to mention me, but it's really nice that they do. And you know, when I look at Twitter, I'm, I'm getting people that, that are like, "Oh, I love your character." You know, that's great. And uh, I really appreciate it. You know, it's it's always nice to be appreciated. So you know, I try. I just try to be honest with what I was doing and, and create like a whole person, not just like an evil villain. You know what I mean? I wanted it to be a person, yeah, who was a little like crazy, but at the same time, he was also just a human being, like for instance when my partner dies or whatever, I wanted that to be sort of like a down moment, you know. I hope that came across that way. Now, um, I know I asked you this question on Twitter recently, but I'm going to ask you again on camera. Okay. How was the swim at the end of the movie? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man, it was it was good. You have to see the movie to know what he's talking about. But <laughs> basically, <laughs> I get my my payback dues or whatever. Uh, the swim was all right. I didn't actually swim, thank God. Because if I did, I probably would have gotten uh, hypothermia or something. Uh, yeah, that that I I, th I thought that was a really funny scene. I love that. Scene. Yeah, I thought it was too. I thought it yeah. was a unique way to kind of you know people seeing you in the movie as the shady. Devious villain, right. but they got to see a comedic side too. Yeah. As well. No, I'm glad, man. I, I, I sort of, I, I felt the same way about that scene. So, you know, hopefully everybody will enjoy it when they see it. All right, now, um, any advice you want to give to upcoming people who may be looking to get into acting, and you know, what, what advice would you give them? Sure. Uh, first of all, you know, if you really want to do it, get get training that doesn't have to be university training but go go get some training on camera training you know and you have to make the decision that you really want to do it and then you just never give up you just keep going non-stop you know keep searching for agencies keep getting it get an agent go on auditions take classes keep taking classes do plays do everything you can all right now how can the people get in contact with you you know social media yeah people? sure at at Melissic Milan for my Twitter. And you can check me on IMDb, Milan Malisic. That's about it. Alright, yeah. Boston and Vic, VixenBoston.com. I'm No Mercy. This is my interview with Milan Malisic. And we'll see y'all later. Make nope. sure y'all go check out Freezer, ASAP. Great movie. And especially recommended by me. Alright, we're out of here.